Hey everyone, it's about that time of year when we do liquid liquid extractions in the lab, so I'm going to show you a short demonstration here in which I do a bit of a contrived separation, but one that shows you the technique and the principles behind liquid liquid extraction. To conduct our extraction, we're going to bring the hot plate and lab jack back into the fume hood. And I'm going to try to purify some 2-naphthol, which when it's pure looks like this, kind of an orange-yellow colored solid. But I've contaminated some with a bit of this blue food dye, so we can see the contaminant. And here is the result. It's a beaker full of 2-naphthol, which isn't orange at all. It's got sort of a greenish hue because that blue food dye has mixed in with the yellow naphthol. To clean it up, I'll be using two immiscible liquids, N-butanol and water and a few collection flasks. I'm going to use Erlenmeyer flasks for that purpose. I've also got my ground glass stopper and what's known as a separatory funnel. This is a pear-shaped funnel. It's tapered and it's got a iron ring supporting it so I can slip it in and out of that iron ring easily. Well, now that we've got everything together, we're ready to purify that 2-naphthol that I've contaminated. Now let's have a closer look at that separatory funnel. Well, the separatory funnel has a Teflon stopcock at the base. This allows us to remove liquids by draining them out of the funnel. It's secured with a nut and washer on the opposite side from the control. And we want to be careful with this Teflon stopcock because it's soft and it can be damaged. So I'll put it back in and I'll replace my washer, a little grommet in between there, and my nut tightening it down hand tight so that I can still turn the stopcock, but it won't leak when I place liquids inside. Now notice that little opening there in the tapered portion of the stopcock. When it's pointed in there where we can see it, that means the stopcock is closed. So I'll leave it in the closed position and return it to the iron ring. Now let's begin the process of purifying this 2-naphthol that contains the blue food dye impurity. I'm going to put the beaker containing my impure naphthol on my stir plate and to it I'm going to add my N-butanol. This is going to dissolve both the 2-naphthol and the blue food dye impurity. So I'll start my stir plate going and in relatively short order I should see everything dissolve. Now you may think to yourself at first what's the purpose of this? I'm just dissolving both the uh, compound I want and the impurity but that's the first step in conducting a liquid-liquid extraction. So at this point you can see my yellow naphthol and my blue food dye have created a green solution. This is going to help me track where each one is as we go through my extraction. Excellent. Now, the next step in conducting my extraction is to be sure my separatory funnel stopcock is closed because I don't want to make a mess. And I'm going to add that solution of my compound and impurity to the separatory funnel while it's resting inside of the iron ring. The next step in the process is to give my impurities somewhere else to go. So I'm going to give it 50 milliliters of water, a solvent in which the blue food dye is far more soluble than butanol, but the 2-naphthol is not. I'll gently pour that in, which isn't really a requirement to the procedure, but I'm hoping to show you the process as it happens, so I'm going to be very delicate with this as I go. Now you'll probably notice that once I've added that water, I haven't really changed much. I still have sort of a green solution of naphthol floating above water because the density of the butanol solvent is lower. Before long, we're going to take a step that ensures that we'll get all that blue food dye into the water layer. What I'm going to do is take my ground glass stopper and secure the top of my separatory funnel so nothing can come out the top. And the reason I'm going to do this is that I have to agitate my mixture. By holding the top closed and inverting the funnel, I cause many, many small inclusions of one solvent to form inside of the other. This speeds the process known as partitioning, in which each compound dissolved in my original butanol solution gets a choice. Does it want to be in the water? Does it want to be in the butanol? After I give it a suitable agitation, I let it rest. 
And at this point, you can begin to see in this time lapse the two solvents separating from one another. After a period of time, you'll begin to see a change happening. Notice that I've got a thin layer of emulsion between the two, and we'll deal with that later. But for now, you'll notice that I have a blue layer underneath of a yellow layer where I used to have a green solution. Now I'm going to remove that ground glass stopper from the top of my separatory funnel so that liquid can flow out without there being a vacuum forming in the headspace. And placing a suitable collection vessel below, here I'm using an Erlenmeyer flask, I'll open my stopcock carefully and notice that the solution that drains out from below, of course, is the more dense water that contains only the blue dye. I'll watch carefully, ensuring that just as that thin layer of emulsion in the middle reaches my stopcock, I close it. There it is. Having stopped the flow there, I now have an aqueous solution of pure blue food dye. Next, because I had a bit of emulsion in there from the agitation process, I'm going to separate that into a separate vessel, a little beaker that I've set aside. And finally, I'll collect my purified naphthol by adding a new clean collection vessel and opening the stopcock and allowing that solution to drain into that new collection flask. Notice again, we've got a yellow solution now. We've gotten rid of that blue impurity that was ultimately causing my product to look green. Using this process, we can separate a number of different organic compounds from one another. And of course, once they've been separated into different flasks in solution, we use a number of other techniques to finally recover the solid from these solutions. But for now, this ends our short demonstration of a liquid-liquid extraction. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you next time.